Okay, real quick, time of flight is about two seconds at 782 yards. The speed of sound is about 2.1 seconds to come back. So from the time you hear the shot to the time you hear the ring of the steel is gonna be about 4.1 seconds. So now you can either fast forward to where I do the shooting or you can listen to me talk about the rifle and the shot before I actually do the shots. Okay, before I get to the actual shooting portion of the video, which is me standing freehand at 782 yards, I want to uh, talk about how I got to there. Uh, I've seen three distances, maybe more on the internet. People have their idea of how far the shot actually was. Uh, there's one guy that actually talked to the rancher and he uh, told them where they were sitting at, where, where they were standing at, where the bucket was located, and he calculated that out to be 325 yards. A friend of mine looked at the video, his name is William DeFeline, he looked at the video, and because you have a shot back from where the bucket is at to where the people are, he used science to say, well, the bucket's supposed to be a tall, those people are that tall, he measured the bucket, measured the people, and came out with 400 yards. There is a Quigley shoot somewhere, and I don't know if it's the Montana Quigley shoot or somewhere, they based the shot off of 550 yards, and I have no clue how they came up with that distance. And then we come to the 782 yards that I shot today. And what it boils down to is some idiot used his stopwatch from the time the bucket is picked up to where the bucket is set down. The problem with that is it's not one continuous shot. They shoot around to here, to here, to here, but they're using the illusion of time. So the guy in his stopwatch is like, well, okay, there's something there. The problem is he doesn't take into consideration the horse jumped over a fence. He doesn't take into consideration that the horse is running slightly uphill. That'll slow it down. And last but not least, the, he actually, the horse is stopped when Marston shoots his gun. Uh, at 782 yards, if Marston was to shoot his gun, it's going to take two seconds for the sound, the speed of sound, to get the sound to the horse. The horse still should have been running, but it's already stopped when he shoots. So that's what's wrong with all of that science. Okay, the other thing that's Holly weirded out is the bucket itself. When it goes flying through the air, that's not reality at all. You have a bucket there, bullet comes in, pokes a hole in it pokes an exit hole and leaves. It does not leave very much energy behind. So when the bucket goes flying up in the air and you see that hole in it, well, that really didn't happen. They had a little explosion there to throw it up in the air. So what I got here is a little demonstration. I got two tin cans. I got my 22 little lever gun out. I'm gonna poke a hole in the left one and then I'm gonna make the right one go flying. And basically what it boils down to on the right one, instead of hitting the tin can, I'm gonna hit the ground right at the base of it so the ground explodes and then the tin can will go flying. And uh, that's one of the things in the movie that you see that is Holly weirded out. Tin can's still there. See how the tin can went flying? Okay, another thing I want to talk about is how difficult it is to see the target through the peep sight. Uh, when I'm standing there at 782 yards, I can see it fine. I can see color and I can see the target. I find it no problem. When I look through the peep sight here, the hole is less than 50 thou. I don't have gauge pins, so I don't know how small it is, but I lose color and the target gets much smaller. Also, if I pull up on it, the tube in the front here where the front side is at, I have just a blade sitting there. If I pull that up and it's on the target, now all of a sudden I'm fishing around trying to find it. I lose the target that way. And then sometimes I got to kind of drop down, there it is, and then bring it up and then, okay, now I'm on the target. The target is very difficult to see through this little peep sight while you're standing freehand. Uh, at the beginning of that scene, Marston picks out the piece of paper and he's got the, th I believe it's three or five holes. Uh, in a white piece of paper. I question one's, and it says 900 yards on it. I question one's ability to put a piece of paper, whether it's on a tree or anything that size, look through that peep sight and actually see it at 900 yards. Okay, I want to mention the rifle. The rifle that he used was a Shiloh Sharps rifle, and uh, my understanding is that they had three of them made for the movie. Back then when that uh, movie was made, there was a four-year wait to buy a Shiloh Sharps rifle. So if you wanted one, you ordered it, and four years later, if you're lucky, you got to see it. They had three of them, and I'll bet you money they didn't wait four years to get them. 
Also, right now, a uh, guy I met here recently, his name is Gary, he's from Montana. He's got one on order, and uh, it's a two and a half year wait right now to pick up a Shiloh Sharps rifle. Okay, now that I'm done talking about Hollywood and how they make movies and, you know, the illusion of distance and whatnot, what I want to do is get into the reality of everything. Is it possible to hit the shot? And the answer is yes, it is. 782 yards standing freehand. I'm only five foot seven. Tom Selleck, 6'3", 6'4". He's a much bigger guy than I am. This gun's a pretty heavy gun, 34-inch barrel. Mine's 45 120 He was using a 45 110 He had a 540-grain paper patch uh, bullet, metallic cartridge, as he said. Well, I'm only using a 500-grain bullet, and it's not paper patched. About there will do. Are you certain you wouldn't like the bucket a little closer? Quite certain. Yes, I really did get that with my Sharps rifle. Booyah!